the skies are so smoky right now that I can see the full disk of the sun, naked eye. Really bizarre. It's coming from forest fires in the west and uh, I've never seen anything like it. If you follow Astro Backyard on social media, you may have already seen a lot of the Omega Nebula images that I've shared. So why do I keep coming back to this target? It's because I'm still not satisfied with the result. The Omega Nebula or the Swan Nebula, some people call it, M17, has got the wow factor to it. And up to this point, I just don't think I've done it justice. This scenario brings up an interesting aspect of this hobby we call astrophotography, and it's about setting expectations. Everyone's got their own idea of how an object should look in their head, and I personally think it's really important to set your expectations low early on. However, there's a reason you look back at last year's work and shake your head, and it's called progress. Progress is what we all crave in this hobby, and setting your expectations properly can be the difference between a lifelong hobby and posting up all of your gear for sale. So do yourself a favor, heck, do me a favor. Slow down. Enjoy all the miniature victories along the way, and take a moment to realize how far you've come and be proud of your accomplishments so far. The biggest problem with my early attempts at this nebula are an easy one to fix. I just wasn't using the right focal length. So wide field astrophotography, deep sky astrophotography is one of my favorite ways to do astro, but it just wasn't right for my expectations of this target. I wanted to see more up close details of M17. I know they're in there, but shooting wide, I just didn't have the resolution to get there. So I've made a big change in that regard. To rectify this problem, I'm using a telescope that's been sitting on the shelf for far too long. The William Optics Fluorostar 132 is a big ass triplet APO refractor with a focal length of 925 millimeters. I smell dog poop somewhere. I stepped in dog poop. I stepped in your poop. I stepped in your poop. It's okay. The plan is to shoot as many three minute sub exposures on the Omega Nebula as possible, despite the fact that it is a hot night with a not quite first quarter moon, 44% illuminated, and for the first time in a long time, forest fire smoke. I mean, honestly, the clear sky chart has never looked this good. And if it's not one thing, it's another. It's, it's the smoke out here. So. I don't know what that's going to do to my imaging. I uh, might put a lid on the whole thing, but I'm going to try anyway. Well, we've still got some daylight. Let's uh, take a complete look at everything I'll be using in my setup tonight for this image of M17. First up is this beastly looking mount known as the Celestron CGXL. So 75 pound payload. It sounds like a coffee grinder when it's slewing. It's an absolute beast. The hardware is so solid and secure. Uh, the, the Celestron Nexstar system is great. Although now I've got it plugged into my PC to be controlled using the ASCOM controller. So, you know, using uh, APT to uh, control the mount and pulse guiding with, with PHD2 guiding, all that. So a uh, really great mount and uh, really suitable for a big heavy telescope like this. The telescope itself, as I said, is a William Optics Fluorostar 132, FLT 132. It is an apochromatic triplet refractor, so excellent contrast, color correction, all the benefits of an apo in a massive size. So 132 millimeter objective at F7, uh, 925 millimeter focal length. So just a really powerful meaty refractor. And uh, I don't use this enough because it is so huge, but um, I'm hoping it's actually just, just right for uh, the Omega Nebula. What I'm basing this on, if you watch uh, Chuck Ayub from Chuck's Astrophotography, he shot the Omega Nebula with his uh, Explore Scientific 127 with a very similar focal length, another triplet APO, and it turned out just beautifully. So 
kind of uh, borrowing his setup idea for that one. If you don't follow Chuck, you definitely should. Chuck's astrophotography, I watch every one of his videos. Such a down to earth guy, you'll absolutely love him. Riding up top here is a 50 millimeter William Optics guide scope with a ZWO ASI 290mm mini guide camera. So this is a super sensitive guide camera, mono, as I said. I use PHD2 guiding to, uh, to auto guide this rig here. A 50 millimeter guide scope is more than enough. This is the one that comes with the, uh, the package with the FLT-132. With the, uh, it comes with these uh, guide scope rings mounted to the scope like this. Really convenient package. This uh, 132 actually comes with the, the built-in Batnoff mask as well. Just screws off the, uh, the lens cap there. So I use that for focusing. No autofocus are installed on this scope yet, but uh, I would need a, a robust one for sure. It's quite heavy. As you can see, I've got my dew heater band at the top there, and that's going to be powered by the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box. Love this little guy. That's also powering my uh, ZWO ASI 294MC Pro one-shot color camera. And then uh, the new item on this rig, the only thing I haven't shared before, is the IDIS. It's so convenient. The title's right there. The NGS-1. So this is the uh, night sky glow filter. So it's a broadband uh, light pollution filter and uh, its goal is to capture natural star colors as they all do and uh, let in a lot of light and natural colors so broadband targets like galaxies and uh, you might think it's an odd choice for an emission nebula. I could be using something like uh, I could shoot it just HA and get a lot of data or something like the, the Optolong L Enhance and get it in the dual band pass narrow band. That would be great and I have shot it that way before. But this time I'm just obsessed with getting those natural star colors. I just want that really uh, natural looking color balance in the image. And uh, M17 is just bright and vivid enough to actually pop in a broadband filter. I remember shooting it with my stock DSLR back in the day and uh, I was really impressed. So hopefully this is my best version ever of the Omega slash Swan Nebula. What's that? I've seen some really cool birds fly over. It was a great blue heron about 10 minutes ago. I saw a bald eagle the other day. As, as you can tell, I'm spending a, a lot of time back here. To uh, illustrate how painful this four smoke issue is that I'm dealing with, you got to see the clear sky chart for tonight. All zeros. That never, ever happens. And of course, forest fire smoke. To help keep the mosquitoes away, I've got uh, my biggest fan out here. This is my biggest fan. The Itis Night Sky Glow filter isn't the only broadband filter in this category, not by a mile. In fact, the, uh, the Optolong L Pro is a really comparable filter to this one. Uh, the reason why I'm really uh, tempted to try this one out, really curious to try it, is that uh, it's said to do a great job of blocking out white LED lights. And uh, if you saw that Twitter post I made, the animated GIF, what happened to the light pollution in my city from 2018 to 19? They installed LED white lights all the way down my street and uh, basically the light pollution got as bad as it was in the center of town all the way to the edges. Uh, so really disheartening. Um, but this filter, I saw the transmission graph and it, it looks like it blocks out more of that white LED emission line, transmission line. So uh, I'm really hoping I see a difference in this one. <laughs>